Now next, parking. Wow, it's something that makes you angry. You've been telling us that the systems used by some companies to keep an eye on you when you're going in and out of a car park have left you with charges when you've done nothing wrong. And there's one company we've had more complaints about than any other. But both that company and the industry body admit the technology they rely on doesn't always work. So I hit the road in my very filthy car to find out more. So Lisa, you do a lot of travelling. I do, yeah. I probably work about six days a week. I can see the sign for services. I'm with mobile beauty therapist Lisa Johnston, who spends a lot of time on the road, so often takes breaks between clients at service stations. But the one we're headed to ended up causing her a lot of bother. So this is the service station in question? Yes, this is the one. When Lisa visited these services outside Leicester just before Christmas in 2016, the parking was managed by one of the industry's biggest names, Parking Eye. She was able to park absolutely free for a maximum stay of two hours. So I came in in the afternoon and I literally just went in, got a drink, I think, maybe a snack. And then I must have been here for about 15 minutes and then I left to go back to work. So far, so good. But then, rather than go all the way home, Lisa returned to the same services at six o'clock for another break. I was here for probably like 15, 20 minutes and then I left to go back to work again. Lisa's two separate 15 minute pit stops here were both well within the two hour limit. But Parking Eye saw things very differently. I then got a letter from Parking Eye and they were going to charge me £100 uh, for staying for four and a half hours. I was shocked actually when I got the letter. I thought, thought this is a joke because I don't have time to sit in a service station for that amount of time. Parking Eye was adamant its record showed that rather than making two visits, Lisa had been there only once, but she knew that wasn't the case. I straight away went to the appeals procedure and appealed to them. Yeah. Yeah, because I knew that I hadn't, I, I knew which clients I'd been to in that time. Did you actually say in your uh, appeal, what would I have done for four hours in a service station? <laughs> yeah. Albeit the uh, array of eateries. <laughs> I, I mean, it was about two or three days before Christmas, so my busiest day of the entire year for work. Yeah. So I didn't have time to sit in a service station for four and a half hours. <laughs> After appeals to both Parking Eye and the independent appeals panel Poplar were rejected, Lisa found herself facing court proceedings. But she told Parking Eye she had clients prepared to testify to her whereabouts. It went on for like the best part of a year. Really? So yeah, it was. It was very stressful. So you can imagine if you were going through that situation and you didn't have witnesses as well. Yeah. You couldn't prove where you'd been. No, it'd be even worse, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. In the end, Lisa's case was dropped. It's not easy trying to remember and prove where you've been and when, and I reckon most people would have the same problem. But in any case, if it's not your error, why should you have to prove it? And what happens if you can't? Well, our inbox shows there are plenty of other people who've had very similar experiences, making two visits to a car park, only to be told by Parking Eye there'd been just one. A likely explanation for errors like these is the increasing reliance some parking companies now put on Automatic Number Plate Recognition, or AMPR. Put simply, a camera captures a vehicle's number plate as it enters and leaves a car park. A computer then works out how long it's been there. Which is fine if the system always gets it right. But Sophie Sheridan is among those who feel they've paid the price when it hasn't. She fell foul of parking eye in a hospital car park near Cardiff while visiting her terminally ill granddad. I arrived at the hospital, went in to the car park. It was right next to the sign, so we had four hours. So I knew how long I had. I was in the evening at six o'clock and I left at that night to go home because I've got two little ones. I returned the next day to obviously see my grandfather for the last time. 
A week after her granddad died, Sophie received a letter from Parking Eye saying her car had been parked in the hospital overnight for a total of 13 hours and 30 minutes and she'd have to pay £40. They were completely in the wrong. I, I was like, I'm not paying it. There's no way I'm paying this. I knew I'd gone home and I didn't agree with having a parking ticket sent to me. As part of the appeals process, Sophie and her mum, Sarah, were sent a record of each time Sophie's car was caught on camera and going through it, they're confident it backs up what they're saying. You've got the start times of going in and then all the times you're going in and out and then coming out at the end. There's about five entries on each one going in and coming out, but ultimately the start and the end times match up with what Sophie actually did. It's quite clear on the report that Sophie wasn't there overnight. But Parking Eye had identified just one entrance and one exit, caught on camera 13 and a half hours apart. So how reliable is the ANPR camera system? It's not 100% accurate, so there are issues certainly around reading the number plate. So certain letters and numbers can be mixed up, A's for fours, L's for ones, uh, that kind of thing. From a driver's perspective, they've paid the ticket or they've stayed within the allotted time, but yet a charge still gets issued and drivers don't want to feel that kind of pressure, especially if they've been law-abiding in the first place. And the AA believes the parking companies need to work harder at making sure people aren't hit with penalties they shouldn't have to pay. We want them to focus on getting their software systems in place and make sure that these kind of anomalies simply don't happen. The parking industry's own trade body, the British Parking Association, recognises on its website that there are issues with ANPR, specifically flagging the danger of two separate visits being paired into an overstay. It says car park operators should be checking all ANPR transactions to ensure that this does not occur. So instead of demanding that drivers prove that they weren't in a car park, shouldn't it be up to companies like Parking Eye to make sure people aren't hit with charges they've done nothing to deserve in the first place? Well, the appeals service Poplar says that Lisa, our first case, provided names and contact details for her clients, but no physical evidence. So while it understands her frustration, evidence is all it can use to make a decision. And on that one, Parking Eye told us it decided on review to discontinue and cancel the court claim. As for our second case, Sophie, after we filmed with her, her appeal was rejected by Poplar. But all that changed when we got in touch, pointing out some errors that we'd spotted going through the report. Poplar says it missed the fact that the ANPR technology had confused some O's for zeros, meaning not all Sophie's visits to the car park were recorded against her vehicle. It's apologised for that, and she's now had her parking charge refunded. A great result. Good but thanks. Parking Eye says its ANPR systems are the benchmark for the industry, capturing over one billion vehicle movements every year. It says dirty number plates, driving very close behind high-sided vehicles, and weather conditions can all affect the accuracy of the readings. But anyone who feels they shouldn't have been charged will have their appeal reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. Well, with me now is Andrew Pester, who's the CEO of the British Parking Association. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, it isn't fair, this, is it? People getting parking charge notices when they haven't done anything wrong. Well, I, I think it, the key thing to remember here is, is why parking charges are there, and it's about effective uh, management of car parking to make places uh, accessible for all. So you think it's fair then that these people get parking charges when they've not done something wrong? No, and I think that's why we've put in a clear and strong process in place to manage that process. So uh, when, when a parking charge notice is issued, um, it's based on the information available at the time. Um, and then there is an opportunity for the motorist to appeal against that charge with further information. And I think that's absolutely the right thing to do, is provide the opportunity for the motorist to challenge. And that's the very fact that we created Poplar, the independent appeals process, whereby motorists can get free, independent, partial uh, um, opportunity for a redress. But why is the onus on the driver to prove that they weren't there? when these companies have all the data? 
So I think Poplar um, operates very similar to how uh, regulated parking happens in the statutory area in that um, uh, the key thing is to make sure that the motorist has the opportunity to challenge. But even when they do, we've seen with one of the examples that Poplar didn't uphold, uphold the appeal and then when we got involved, then they realised that the driver was right and they were wrong. I yeah. mean, are they even looking at the data properly? Yeah, uh, this is the very fact. So um, with any technology, it's not 100%. It's 13 years old, or? It, with, so I think where the, where the technology involved, it can often isn't 100% foolproof. And that's why we have checks and balances within our code of practice, which we hold our members to account. But if and that code of practice is consulted on with government and consumer bodies to make sure that it is robust. Errors do happen and lessons have to be learned. But if there are so few mistakes from it, why can't you just solve them quickly without the driver having to prove where they were? Well, I think this is, this is a very common process in that when the operator issues a ticket, they, they may not have all of the information. And this is about giving the motorist the opportunity to, to challenge that. And we have seen nearly a quarter of a million motorists use Poplar, which is free and independent for, for the sector. I think it's but really it doesn't necessarily always work. No, and, and I think that improvements can always be made. And this is why we're absolutely delighted that Sir Greg Knight has put forward a private member's bill looking at a single code, a single standard setting body and a robust independent appeals process. Uh -huh. Well, it gets sorted then. Andrew, thank you very much for coming in to talk to us about Thank this. you.